um, when I first got to, to know, well, when I first met Otto, it was also at Fulani Pride Centre, but it was at Mox. And at that time, it was 2007, mm. Eve of uh, National Day. Mm. Not because I can remember, but because I checked just now. Um, <laughs> it was the launch of this book called Tong Gensen by Ouyang Wenfeng. And back then, Otto was, um, I, I felt that he was so cornered. He, he spoke, there was, there was this like, moustache guy, quite good looking, and he was so angry about something. Um, and I, I felt at that point of time that, okay, that's it, all oh, this guy is going to come out soon. Either come out or kill someone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I felt that you were going to come out. Yeah. And then, you know, a couple of months after that, a couple of weeks after that, there was auto found in Straits Times and all over Facebook. <coughs> And since then, um, my various exposure to him was via Facebook and I figured out that he had somewhat moved from the angry auto already. La. He's quite happy now. So I was curious, la, Gepo want to know the why and how he arrived at this point. Well, that's why we got him to come and expose himself to Gepo. <laughs> right, uh, so the title of this talk is called sorry. Okay. The title of this talk is called What is Standing Between Me and My Big Gay Heaven? My idea of heaven involves three things. One, that in this life, that I am free to express myself openly. That is my idea of heaven. Second, in this life, that I get to chase after my dreams and make some of them come true before I die. That to me is heaven. And the third thing about this heaven is, I must be surrounded by people I love. The first segment is, completing yourself. Okay? Now, you know this movie called uh, Jerry Maguire? Some of you might be too young. It's a Tom Cruise movie. There's a very famous line. Okay, the Tom Cruise go and, go and see the, the girl, right? And then, he goes one of those classic lines, and he, call, he tells her, You complete me. Right? So, um, what it means is actually, uh, a lot of times we walk around, right? I don't know if you have that feeling, any one of you have that feeling uh, that you walk around like you're not a complete person, that some parts of you are missing, and maybe some parts of you are very very weak, whereas some parts of you are very strong, and then you look around, walk around, sometimes it feels like, for me, right, it seems like I'm very strong at drawing, but there's a lot of other parts missing that stop me from becoming a top comic artist, right? It's almost like walking around without a leg like that, or an arm, right? So the usual solution is to go around and look look for completion in a partner, a boyfriend or girlfriend, and says, will you complete me, right? It doesn't work. It never works. And if you go around looking for a partner like that, he will leave you or she will leave you, right? You can't go to someone and say, hello, I'm missing a leg, will you be my, my leg for the rest of my life? <laughs> because the person has his, his or her own dreams. So, completing yourself is not looking for a partner to do that. Nobody's going to complete yourself, complete you. A partner can complement you. A partner can be in a dance with you so that you don't spin out into the fringe of society or spin out into the fringe of madness. When did I get this idea? Um, it was in 2007 or so, I watched this play by Alfian Sa'ad. It's called Asian Boys Volume 3. It was modified from this old book uh, called Peculiar Chris. Very famous first gay novel in Singapore, isn't it? We, yes. we had it upstairs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the author actually wrote a very, very good follow-up called Quiet Time. Mm -hmm. And you also have it upstairs, right? Yes, you do. Autograph copy. <laughs> Fire time is very good, very current. So anyway, when I saw the play, right, in the story, there is a little, there are two acts. The first act is there's a sissy little gay boy in, in secondary school, okay? And he was wonderful, he's bubbly, he brings joy to everyone. The only problem is his sissiness turned his, the, the guy that he likes off. He couldn't get the guy that he loves. So in act two, they got a different actor to play this CC boy. They, the, the boy has grown up. And when the, the actor first came out, we were like, who's that? 
<laughs> he is short hair, muscle. Your, your, your standard really hot gym bot, you know, and, and he talks with a slag. A very butch slag, by the way. And we were like, what the heck is going on? How come the CC boy become like that? And then we realized that he became like that because he felt that his seasiness is something bad. So he 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 just throw that CC boy in the closet and he tried to become something else. So when I saw that, and then at the end of the play, right, at the end of the act, what happened is Elfian arranged for those two actors uh, to meet each other. The hot gym bot meets the CC boy on stage, and then they walk towards each other. And then they hug. When that happened, I was like, oh my god, tears was just flowing down my eyes because I realized what they were saying. I realized that is me. Because in secondary school, right, there is a sissy boy in me. Okay, I wasn't like really flaming, right? I wasn't very <laughs> successful there. But there is a part of me that I, you know, certain things that I deem to be, you know, uh, fem more feminine than masculine. And when I realized that I was gay, the first thing I do is to grab that whatever quality that I deem feminine and shove it, shove it, shove it and bury it. Which is why I'm talking to you like this now. <laughs> <laughs> so show us what you were like when you were in, uh, in primary school, let's say. I, I was a nerd. No, my my sissy boy was more like, you know, oh my god! Okay. Uh, primary school, right, my teacher gave me a, a you know, handicraft, right? The boys get this wooden car, and then the girls get this dog, uh, pieces of cloth to sew up, and then stuff on the girl dog, right? <laughs> then I got the car, like, then I look at the dog, and then I take my car, go, go out to the front, psh, give me the dog. <laughs> <laughs> that evening, I was sewing up the dog, and then the dog go and join the the end of my bed uh, with the 20 other dolls and many <laughs> and toys and that was me when I realized I was gay right the first thing I do was take all those dolls and stuff it in the cupboard so I didn't realize the impact of that but the impact is that I killed off a part of me and when I saw the play I decided that it's not working. I'm not complete. There's nothing wrong with that little sissy boy. And I told myself, I'm getting him back in my life. I don't know what I'm going to get when I get him back. But I declare, I just say, I'm going to get him back. And that's it. A few months later, I came out. So it turns out that sissy boy was the one with the box. The what? The boss of the box. The the balls. Balls. Oh. The one with the, the guts. Ah, right. The one with the courage. The one who says, I'm gonna get it done no matter what. Right. So that's my first taste of feeling more complete. And boy, wow, that was a fantastic first taste, man. And then I realized uh, I feel like what no, I feel like Transformer. You know Transformer sometimes, you know, TV cartoon. Uh, at the end, right, there's all these yeah, the very big villain, and then the Transformer realize they have to like combine and make the one big robot, right? Ah, I feel like whoa, psh, whoa, power man. And then I realize that is what I need to do some more. I need to go back in my past and pick up the pieces that I discarded because I felt that you know the first. For example, I scored straight A for my secondary school. Okay, I was being very very un unreasonable. I don't go out with my friends. I don't hang out with them. I was totally uncool, I was a big nerd because I spent so much time studying and then when I got my O-level results, right, the first thing I do is that, okay, you get, I'm going to get rid of this part of me I don't want to be a nerd I want to be cool, I want to be like the jocks So I proceeded to sabotage myself and make sure that I don't get results You're, but you're one of the most butch acting Gay men, I know. I can't imagine you as a sissy boy. <laughs> I what exactly you mean when you say sissy boy. Sissy boy means. Oh. Sort of like so that. that's the thing, see? I, like I, that, I, I really don't know. I don't know what is a sissy boy. All I know is there's a part of me that I deem as weak, unattractive, undesirable. And I decided I'm not going to be like that. 
I can't really tell you, you know, do I actually walk around with a switch? I don't. Uh, I walk around like there's a rod up my ass, you know, like a... <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I, I don't know what, what, what the CC boy would have been like. But I, all I know was, I saw some of the more CC ones in my, in my school, and I don't dare to be like them because they're always teased. And when they are teased, I told myself I don't want to be like that. <laughs>